Hello, everyone, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Anna McNaught, and we are back here for day two with Renee Robin. Hey, Renee, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you doing? <laughs> good. I'm so excited for day two and welcome everyone into the chat. Hope you all are doing well today and excited for day two with some cyberpunk vibes, which I'm super stoked for, but I won't spoil the surprise just yet. Um, just want to remind everyone to start your day with the creative encore of the Photoshop Creative Challenge hosted by Sam Peterson every weekday at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Tune in and challenge yourself with a new prompt each day. And for those of you that are watching over on YouTube, be sure to come over to behance.net slash live so that you can join in and chat with us and say hello to Renee and ask her any questions that you might have today. So Renee, you created something absolutely stunning yesterday, and we can take a look at that in uh, a few minutes here, but I just want to dive right into your portfolio work because I think for those of you that weren't here with us yesterday, you're going to be blown away by Renee's incredible photography and compositing. So Renee, over to you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And uh, I'm super stoked to be back here for day two. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is the the you know collection of digital artwork that I've done over the years. Um, I mean, I work mostly in the studio. Uh, I'm from Canada, so shooting outdoors, um, it's either winter or bug season. So I'm definitely a studio shooter. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I grew up on video games and fantasy novels and graphic novels and, you know, artists like Frank Frazetta and, uh, you know, it just heavily influenced my work, obviously. So if you know who any of the, if you know who that artist is anyways, um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I love looking at people and figuring out like what I can do with them, what they can become, like maybe what they don't even know that they have inside of them. Um, yeah, I mean, this is. This is kind of it. There's like a lot of a lot of studio time and a lot of sitting in front of the computer looking like a shrimp <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that pose quite well. <laughs> right. Yeah, my back is just like what? <laughs> oh my god, I know. Don't even get me started. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, well, stuff. it's really cool and amazing that you give these people an opportunity to really channel their truest selves, and and your work is just so beautiful. Well, I super appreciate that. And I feel the exact same way about your work. When I found out that you were the host today, I was just like, oh, damn. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. So thank good. you. <laughs> Means a lot. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so cool. But yeah, this is this is kind of it. I mean, that's just like a smattering of it. It's on my website. There's probably some people who build websites are probably like, that's too much work on your site. But I can't pick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> hey, it's your like. site. You're allowed to do whatever you want. Do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we had a question yesterday about um, stock packs and stuff like that, though. Um, so if you go to ReneeRobin.com, you'll see it right up here, Artist Stock Packs. So, um, oh, cool. Yeah, just for the people who saw yesterday. Awesome. Um, but yeah, I guess, should I show you what we made yesterday for people who didn't see it? Yeah, let's just take a brief look at it. You don't have to go through it too much, but maybe if there's anything specific that you want to talk about and uh, let us know in the chat if you were here yesterday with us and got to see this or if you have any last minute questions that we can go over um, before diving into the next piece of work. Um, I don't know. Can you see this or? Oh, good. Yeah, there it yes. is. Perfect. Yeah. So this was, uh, these are just the, the two that we made the day of. Um, and obviously, so the funny thing is, you know, just to practice, we made these early. <laughs> I made them the day before just to make sure that everything worked. Cause otherwise you'd be <laughs> sitting here with me going with the back and forth of like, Oh, it worked. It didn't work. Meh. Um, but these are the ones that I'd made previously. So, but it's always funny to see, you know, how, when you make things at one time of the day versus the next time of the day and like how your mood changes and how you're seeing color changes. I mean, I have some friends who are like super consistent and they can remake the same piece of work, like exactly the same the next time. And I'm just not that person. <laughs> Me either. Unless, unless I save exactly how I color graded and I save like the process step by step on like a literal piece of paper, it's always going to look different, um, which I think is kind of fun. I think that's like kind yeah. of exciting. <laughs> I know. I think it's great because then you can create a whole bunch of different pieces kind of around that and like see other ideas that maybe you didn't, you weren't originally thinking of if you had just stuck with the same exact thing and had the same style every time you recreated. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, 
I don't know. I guess that's like the thing about being creative, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Sometimes it just happens that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So obviously if anybody missed yesterday, I believe you can rewatch it on Behance on the YouTube channel, Adobe YouTube channel, I think. Yes. And yeah. we actually have a question from YouTube. Awesome. Um, have you moved into mirrorless or still with 5D Mark? question mark thing. <laughs> <laughs> I am still using my super old as dirt Canon 5D Mark III. Mm, nice. So, I mean, I, I if I have a job where I need the focus system that the Canon, um, the R5 has or the, the whatever the other one, R6, um, yeah. then I'll just rent them right now. I mean, mm. my Mark III is kind of a tank. Like I've put yeah. it through a lot. <laughs> I'm not it's easy really on good my camera. gear. Yeah. And I mean, like, yeah, there, it's definitely got its limitations, but for like 90% of what I'm doing, which is I'm shooting in the studio in controlled environments, yeah. it's fine. <laughs> like it does the trick. So I don't have this like weird gear obsession um, yeah. that a lot of photographers I find get really wrapped up in of like, oh, which one's the best camera? Which one's this? Which one's that? And I mean, like, let's be honest, we were shooting all this stuff a few years ago with like Canon 5D Mark One, and then, you know, like film and you know, technology is always going to allow us to go to new places, but also what we've had for the last 10 years is still more than good enough to do most of the work that we need, unless you're talking like super low light event photography, then like, yes. okay, yeah, maybe the new mirrorless would be great. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. And especially with um, us being compositors, like all of our, our magic that is happening is happening in Photoshop afterwards. And while it may be an, unpop an unpopular opinion with photographers, there's many times where I'm like, well, as long as my camera is good enough, clear enough, sharp enough, then I can create whatever I want in Photoshop and fix those little things later without having to have had spent thousands of dollars on like the perfect gear. Exactly. The only thing that I'm a bit of a snob about is computers because I burn through them so fast. Yeah. That's the only part that's where, I mean, if I'm so we'll see today, like my laptop is getting a little bit tired and it's, it's due for retirement in the next like six months to a year. And I mean, if I'm being held back by waiting for rendering and waiting for my brush strokes and stuff like that, like that's costing me money. So for that's, sure. that's where, you know, the technology for me matters anyways. But yes. I mean, for the cameras, as far as cameras are concerned, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, awesome. Well, yeah, yeah, let's um let's get right into Photoshop and and start working on that new piece. Let's do it. Um, so this is the image that I have in mind here, and I apologize to everyone who sees me touching my nose. I have a cat. I'm allergic to her. I take antihistamines, and there's not enough in the world. <laughs> <laughs> So you're gonna but see you that love happen. her anyways. I do. I stick my face in her belly every morning and I'm just like, cat. <laughs> and then I promptly stick my face in the sink. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is this is the image that I wanted to work with. This is a friend of mine, Steve. He's an actor here in town. And um, I had I had been wanting to photograph this guy for years. And I finally like mustered up the courage and was like, hey, so like, you know. Would it be weird if, you know, cause like sometimes we get weird about asking people in our life. I don't know. Some people don't, but I do, especially if they they work in that kind of industry or adjacent industry already, like in their yeah. off time, maybe they don't want to do the thing that they do for their day job. Right. Or like whatever. Right. But fortunately Steve was like totally down and cool. And, um, a girlfriend of mine, she runs a company called Lewis mayhem and she made this jacket custom for this oh. shoot. She's yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude. It's totally awesome. And the nice thing is that she, it's already sold. So I was able to like modify it in post-production today. Whereas like normally if somebody makes something for a photo shoot that I'm going to be photographing, I try to keep it as authentic as possible to what the, what it is yes. because ultimately I want them to be able to sell it because I want them to make money because they made <laughs> something super cool. Um, but yeah, so she made this jacket and I was just like, Oh my God, this is so awesome. And this like super oversized collar. And I pulled in a friend of mine, Olivia, um, a makeup artist, and I was just like, can we burn his face off? <laughs> so you'll see the file, so cool. the file name here is Steve McBurney face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing what they can do with makeup. I love it. Cause like, yeah, I can do this in post, but also like we have, you know, on the topic of yesterday when I was saying, you know, use the resources that are available to you. I mean, I have been working in this industry for a long time. So I have a bunch of makeup artist friends and I was just like, yeah, I could do it in post, but how cool would it be to not have to? Yeah, 
Absolutely. Yeah. So I always ask myself, which, which is faster doing it in camera or doing it in post and some things are faster to do in post and some things are faster to do in camera. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I will, do you want to, sh- do you want me to show like what I made yesterday and how we can try to like yeah. make it today? Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Get um, people excited. <laughs> we're going to try, uh, cause I don't make tons of cyberpunk artwork, but this is what I think we're going to try to make today more or less. So cool. Um, Love it. every cyberpunk story needs a cat. That's just the rules. I don't make them. <laughs> Every cyberpunk story needs a cat. I mean, it started with like the fifth element and like, you know, there was a cat in there. There's always a cat. Yeah. So um, yep. can you zoom in for everyone? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I just kind of like scratched this together like relatively quickly yesterday. So I'm going to try to cut fewer corners today. But cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. It'll be fun. Yeah. My computer was not happy by the end. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how we do today. <laughs> yeah, <hold up. laughs> uh, so just to save some space, I'm just going to close this though, so that we don't have to worry about, hopefully my computer will be able to be like, okay, fine. It's okay. I'm going to close this too. And I think I can leave you open. Okay. So do, 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 do. And I'm running multiple monitors, so don't mind me here. Okay, so first things first, I want to give this more breathing room. Uh, and I have, so I've just pushed C for my crop tool and I've just hopped up to my content aware crop, which is a real nice feature. <laughs> yes. <laughs> kind of love it. Um, so I'm going to, let's see here. He needs a little more space on the backside. So maybe there-ish. We'll hit enter and it'll be, yeah, I'm super curious to see what this looks like today after I've had like not quite enough sleep, but yesterday I didn't have quite enough sleep yesterday <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah. And it's early for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I typically work till like three in the morning most days. And I did yesterday as well and the day before. So when my alarm went off at like eight this morning, I was like, all right, just like this barely animated corpse. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And you're in Canada. Yeah, yeah, I'm in okay. Alberta. So awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's see here. So first thing we want to do is, I mean, with all cyberpunk, there's my pen. Wait, come, please start making these in neon colors because I lose them constantly. <laughs> yes, I know. Or like somehow have their own tracking device. <laughs> right. Just stick one of those little like Apple things on it and just yeah. like please beep, find me. Beep, beep. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so first things first, uh, I'm going to make, I mean, every cyberpunk guy needs some face paint. Uh, so let's just go to soft light, hit okay. And let's get like a cool color of yellow. Uh, let's see, kind of like a goldyish, not too saturated. And let's get a textured brush while we're at it. Let's see. Using Kyle Webster's brushes. Yeah, I mean, they're kind of great. Yeah, they're amazing. Yeah, I love them. I love them so much. I don't know who Kyle is, but Kyle, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Um. Kyle is great. He's <laughs> one of the Adobe people and he's amazing and his brushes are cool and he's a really nice guy. So yeah, that I highly recommend everyone. Better. Yeah, yeah. I know anyone who's like nice and cool, it makes whatever they're selling or giving away for free, like a million times better. A hundred times. Yeah, exactly. Every, yeah. Everything is better with nice people. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Put this in here. So I'm definitely picking like a textured brush because it's going on to textured skin. Um, and I mean, normally sometimes what I would do is I would use, I would do this on like a frequency separation layer. But I know how angry my computer was yesterday, which is the thing about technology when I hate that it starts to limit limit me. Um, and that's what's happening with this system right now is it's a little tired. So um, how come um, if you're painting pure color, why would you do that on a frequency separation? Layer? So I do it. I do it underneath the texture layer. Mm, gotcha. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So that um, I mean, so that the texture of the skin and everything is like coming through, because obviously what happens when we paint is this flattens out a little bit. Right. So we lose like the subtle points mm. and texture in the skin. 
but um, I mean, there's ways that we can get that back using um, blend if modes and stuff like that. Yes. So that's the workaround today. Just gonna color out the lip a little bit here. This is like my favorite part. I love doing this on any of my work, like the hand painting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I have to be in the right mood for it. Cause like, if I have to crank out like a bunch of artwork and I have to do it mm. fast, then because this takes so long, I'm always just like, <gasps> oh my so God, true. <laughs> so true. Yeah. But at the same time, it is like real satisfying. Excuse me. <laughs> wow. That one snuck up on me. <laughs> Those are allowed to. We call those like sneak attacks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. So quickly so fill satisfying. you in. Right. I just switched over to the uh, uh, paint bucket tool. So I have my keyboard completely remapped. Um, and so like my paint bucket tool is the letter G. So basically like my ASDG you know, Q, W, E, R, all of that has been remapped to like my most commonly used shortcuts. So like brush up and down, hardness, mm. stamping, all that kind of stuff. I had to look down at my keyboard again to see. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So basically like the whole left side of my keyboard is my most commonly used shortcuts. Mm, that's awesome. Definitely helps. So we're going to call this face paint. Um, and we are going to go to our blend if and we're also going to put on some uh stuff here do 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 so i'm just going to pull this through just a little bit so it just looks like a little bit more scraggly a little more rough a little more beat up i kind of like i just love it like my favorite my favorite thing to photograph um you know as i'm like evolving more in my career are people who have faces with character like i just love mm. it like scars and lines and like all the things like you know young and young and like perfect is one thing but like give me faces with story give me faces with history yeah. give me like you know when i photograph them and i build a character around them that like you know there's so much to extrapolate and i just I love it. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it definitely makes for um, a much more interesting composite and image and right. story too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There's this like weird fetishization of like, you know, especially with like book cover artwork and stuff where everyone looks like they're 16. And I realize mm -hmm. on young adult, not young adult novels, like that makes sense, but also. <laughs> yeah. <boring. laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, let's see. Does cool. Bevelyn and Boss do something? It does a little bit. I like that little bit of shine on the nose. I know. Like that's bit here. really nice. I think I'm into that. I think I'm going to leave that. And um, uh, I've just to split here. So when you're working with the uh, blend if mode, you just hold alt or option on your keyboard and you just pull and it separates the two. Yeah. So I, I was like really. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that the holding down alt or option was um, the key with that tool because, or yep. to, in moving that, because I remember I used to see people doing it and would try to do it. And then it would like get all weird and it gets like um, sharp lines instead of nice and smooth. Yeah, exactly. It's exactly what it does. And it's like, it's so frustrating. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to do linear dodge and I'm going to make an earring for this guy yes again cyberpunk guys need jewelry <laughs> <laughs> um i originally was gonna make this like nice and like silver and stuff and then i was like nah because the face paint's yellow we're gonna like make this big cuff also yellow let's see here and i can go like right into the conch so one thing that i'll do when i'm like figuring out what kind of jewelry to paint on someone as I go and research it. <laughs> I like start looking up yeah. like piercing sites and, you know, other things like what is actually out there and like, where does it actually pierce through? Oh, that's a really great idea. Yeah. And sometimes I get good ideas and sometimes I get bad ideas and sometimes <laughs> I go, what did I just see? <laughs> 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 what just happened? <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> Like, holy man. Okay, so um 
I'm gonna try a blend if and see if that's a shape that makes sense. Now here, the only reason I'm using blend if is it's not because I want the earring to look semi-transparent, um, but I find that this is at least for on the ear, just a cheap way to add just a little bit of dimension. Mm. And it's just kind of like sneaky. I don't know if that's like a right shape or not, but. Burr, 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 burr. Yeah, it looks cool. I'm sure some of my friends who do piercings who are probably not watching this because they're working um we'll look at this and go like that's eh, not really right I'm like well let me have this one <laughs> yeah and i mean it could be just like a cuff on his ear too yeah exactly but i mean i think that looks like i think it looks nice i'm gonna turn it down just a little bit because so this is definitely one of those images that like if someone wanted me to blow it up big uh i would probably protest a little <laughs> yeah but that's okay um so this case here i'm gonna add just a little bit of noise uh noise add noise again like too gaussian monochromatic just because of digital painting i mean with this one here the blend if is quite extreme so it's like quite semi-transparent but here it's less so so mm. um i just want to remove that flatness that can happen from digital painting okay so i definitely went like deep diving on the adobe stock website yesterday <laughs> and <laughs> I was trying to figure out like, you know, oh, what kind of stuff could I put on this guy's head? So I found some robot parts yes. or rather a robot and I'm going to cannibalize them. Ooh. Him, her, it, they, they. I feel like a <laughs> robot is a they inherently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. 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 I feel like they can't. So I'm going to go with that. So yeah. I love these wires here, like this like mark here on the cheek and the wires. That was what I really loved about this. So I'm going to do not that. Do, do, do. I am really bad with this tool. I almost never use it. I have some Photoshop friends, like a friend of mine. He's like a master with this. And like the stuff really? you can do is just like watching ballet because it's so precise. And I'm just like, <laughs> we use two meat hooks. <laughs> I'm so bad with this tool. <laughs> so bad. Do you usually use when you're cutting things out, um, the pen tool or what's kind of your method or you uh, not even the, the pen tool. I usually just use brushes because I'm mm. a, like creative Neanderthal. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm the same way. I always cut things out with brushes. People are like, what are you doing? Yeah. It's the long and hard way. And I know, but I'm just so I'm getting old. Okay. <laughs> stuck in my ways. Do you have, um, like a traditional art upbringing or I always am curious because I think that sometimes determines the way people work. Yeah. I mean, I did come from an illustration background for sure. Yeah. I was cool. doing that long before this. So that's probably where it comes from. Yeah. Same. That's, yeah. I think that's why I find comfort in brushes. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. It was just like, no, this is, this is fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Try and like, make this sit neat um because i'm gonna add like a little glowy thing on the side of his head but we need wires for it to make sense mm. there we go so i'm just putting it on multiply and i'm 100 percent cheating because uh, <laughs> <laughs> i just want them to be dark anyways and maybe blend if will save me but also maybe not sometimes i gotta go in and do this manually nope that doesn't work. What about this way? Maybe? No, it's not doing anything. All right, cool. By hand it is. Oh. <laughs> On the topic of. Always the fun part. Yeah. Uh, sure, why not? Let's use the textured brush. And I know I'm going to like stick a bunch of stuff on this anyways. So actually, you know what I could also probably do is a clipping mask. Oh, yeah. I wonder, aha, ah, even faster. Success. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So because obviously multiply works on a blending mode and let's put this under the burning stuff. And 
I'm feeling like the major desire to do some crazy editing right now. Like watching you, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like ready to touch the screen with my hand be like, Ooh, yeah, that there. <laughs> yes. Success. Mission accomplished. That is the ultimate goal is to get people to want to do more art. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't made anything in a while. I've been like very focused on illustrating on my iPad and I haven't been on my computer in Photoshop in quite some time. And I'm like, ah, need to get back in there. <laughs> <laughs> Got to go back and like see the old bay. Like, hey, yes. baby, how you doing? <laughs> been a minute. We took a break. You know, it's been good. But like, yeah. I'm like, I think it's time that we can start seeing each other again. I know. Like, sorry, just uh, you were getting a little too clingy. We're spending too much time I, together. Yeah. I, I needed to do me for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I just need to go like see other programs for a little bit, see like, you know, if it was like, you know, if this is really real and this is really what we wanted to be doing, you know, that's like, yeah, I, I equate Photoshop to like a long-term relationship all the time. 100%. I love that so much. <laughs> because it's kind of like that, you know, like it's, I know it's a thing where you're just like rage quit some stuff one day and you're just like, nope. Yep. <laughs> I need a break. I know. And it's so important too, so that you don't burn out and, and kind of, you come back with like fresh eyes and everything is like, oh, I love this again. Exactly. Yeah. I always tell people like never underestimate the power of a nap, yeah. especially if you're stuck <laughs> on a project. <laughs> like if you're stuck on something and it is just like ruining your life. Yep. Naps, man. Naps are where it's at. Oh, so good. Yeah. Yeah, I've so many times been like working on a project and just being like, I can't figure this out. What is happening? What is going on? I hate this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, and then just like something happens and I'm like, oh, you know, like just like usually it winds up like I'm getting up and I'm leaving and I am going for a nap or going for a walk or something and just like taking some space and then come back to it. And it's just like, oh, there's the answer. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. It's like the most important thing to do. And I feel like anytime I'm in that mindset of this isn't working, I always tend to want to like push it harder and be like, okay, I need to sit here. I need to look at this. I need to keep going, but yeah. what that's up, never what you need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's never what you need. It's never the right move. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. I'm just, um, I duplicated the layer here and I'm just blurring the bottom layer and keeping the top layer sharp. Because these need a little bit of glow. Don't want to be too much. And you're a bit dark, so I'm going to do clipping mask curves, which is Alt click for those of you watching. Make that nice and bright. And obviously, the brightness on this, this is all probably going to change once I start like throwing on the actual environment lighting and stuff like that. Cool. Um, um, but yeah, this thing, this thing I rendered, this guy here in uh boris yesterday oh cool so, yeah yeah that's and like pieces like this they're so specific and so hard to find and yeah. obviously the best option is being able to make your own in 3d but i i don't know how are you doing with the 3d thing because i want to learn it so bad and i feel like i'm just too dumb <laughs> yeah i'm too dumb too uh i tried and it did not go well so i my brother does all my 3d stuff for me oh um, man he's like a master in blender so i'm just like can you make this for me i'll pay you <laughs> i need i need a sibling who's into that my sibling yeah. is not <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we it definitely different. is helpful because I was like, I, I want to learn some stuff and it just, um, yeah, I mean, it's a challenge. Like I, I applaud people who are good in 3d because it's really, really hard. I'm like, I can create it in Photoshop or draw it faster than I can even like make a cube in 3d. So, right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I regret not starting that when I was younger, I had some friends being like, you should really learn 3d because like, it's definitely going to be the future. And my like technophobic butt was just like, no, yeah. change. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah, and 10 years later, I'm like, idiot. 3D was so much easier to learn back then than it is now. Yeah. Oh, I feel you so much on that it's a major pain point. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. I'm just like, oh, it's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> 
but I mean, Hey, it's cool that you have, um, Boris to add these extra effects. And, um, for anyone who's fresh watching today, new here, um, can you just talk about that? Like very briefly of, um, that it's a plugin kind of mention yeah. like how you used it yesterday. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so Boris effects, it is a plugin. Um, and, uh, it just pops up here into Photoshop. And it was funny. So uh, yesterday, after we were after we finished, the guys at Boris actually sent me an email, and they were like, "You're using our old panel. Why aren't you using 2022?" And I was like, "Because this is the one that I got." They're like, "Here's 2022," and I was like, oh, "This is so much better. Thanks, guys." Um, <laughs> That's so awesome. It's basically just like a particle emulator, and um, the reason why I didn't like I'm not running it today while we're doing this is just because. The new one is definitely a little more processor hungry and mm. my computer is just tired. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, but anyways, so they have all of these things here. So like these kind of guys and like, you know, different shapes and stuff. And the nice thing is like a lot of this stuff, you can just buy the stock for it, so You don't have to render it yourself. But sometimes like, like that circle thing on the side of his head, I was looking for like a really specific thing. And I was like digging through stock sites for like 45 minutes and then I was just like I wonder if Boris has a thing because I got the update now and so I looked at it and I was like oh, it's right there how oh, awesome is that <laughs> that's so perfect yeah and I mean it comes like you can like there's lots of parameters and you can modify and everything like that but these are just like the particle illusions right I mean this like fire and everything and smoke and I mean this is like compositors joy but yes. also, I mean, there's like the film lab. So like, you know, color grading and everything else. Um, but it's not really, that's not why I love this, this plugin. Um, you know, is that basically for those of us who are way too bad at 3D, this is like a nice spot in between where we can just, you know, render lightweight stuff. Like this is basically 3D for dummies and it's like, it's good enough yeah. for what I need. And I love it for that. So um, yeah, that's, that's like the short and sweet, the fast version of it. Yeah. Um, and as you can That's tell, my perfect. computer's getting a little slow right now. So we're just going to move that and hit cancel. Um, I think, I think the amazing thing with some of these plugins, when they have these abilities to be able to add so many different cool effects is for one, it helps keep us in our favorite program, AKA Photoshop exactly, um, yeah. without going elsewhere to, to make things or to look for things. And then it allows us to create the things that are within our minds. And Renee and I were talking about this yesterday off screen. And I said, there's many times where I have an idea and I won't create it because I'm like the amount of time it will take me to try to figure out how to make this glowy fireball thing is not yeah. worth it to me for a personal project. So I just don't do it. And yeah. And so many of these cool plugins allow us to create that magic in Photoshop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's like my biggest thing is that I don't want, I don't want to be hopping back and forth from program to program to program. I mean, like, it's just, it's just a pain. Yeah. <laughs> it's so frustrating. And it's just like, it takes so much time out of my day. And, you know, at the end of the day, especially when you're working commercially, time is literally money. Yeah. Um, and so I can't really afford to be doing that all day, every day, you know? So like, yeah, if I had a sibling that I could just be like, Hey, here's 150 bucks. Can you please render this for me? And I'm sure the 3d renderers in here are like $150. That's slave wages, <laughs> which it probably is, but <laughs> this is my uneducated <laughs> brain talking, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So, I mean, like, yeah, I want to be able to stay in the program and I want to be able to do the thing that I'm doing as fast as possible. Yeah. So, did I just freeze there? That's possible. No, you're good. Um, okay, good. Um, also, I, I love the books that this cat is sitting on. Like, <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> where so, is, did you take this photo? Yeah, yeah, I took these. Yeah, this is my friend's cat spook when she was a kitten. I put a casting call out and my favorite thing is casting calls for kittens and puppies because I use them like not all the time, but fairly frequently in my work. And I'll put a call out. I'm like, who's got kittens? And like people will come over and I don't even go to the studio for these. I just like have them in my house. And I'm just like, kittens. <laughs> oh my God. I might have to get some of these images from you because I yeah. love it so, so much. A hundred percent. There's there's so <laughs> many. So yeah. And, and Monique will be stoked because yeah, Spook is, Spook is great. She's so cute. Yeah. Adorable. <laughs> oh. Um, but yeah, so one thing I did in ACR there, uh, you saw me like turning up the clarity and texture, like really, really far. 
um, because the image that I photographed Steve with, this is my Sigma 70 to 200 sport. This is a very, very, very sharp lens. Mm. Um, and the compression is really nice. Whereas in this case here, this kitten was photographed with my very, very, very soft 50 mil prime that has been kicked and dragged all over the planet for the last 15 years. And it's just not sharp anymore. <laughs> yeah. So um, I really, really pushed the uh, texture and clarity sliders a lot more than I normally would. But just because I'm trying to bring out the same amount of crunchiness in this cat that's kind of in here and even still, I mean, obviously it's not the same, but I'm just trying to get it close. Cool. So um, this is not going to be perfect, but we'll try. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm going to have to like redraw and whiskers and stuff like that. So, which is strangely satisfying. I know. I know. It's so right? true. Yeah. There's something about drawing and whiskers where I'm like, this is actually kind of great and so cute. Yeah. Uh, I, I did a cat piece where I like added in every little piece of fur coming off the cat. <laughs> That's what we might be doing today, but not all of it, but definitely <laughs> some of it. <laughs> What am I doing? Yes. Um, let's see. We have a question for you from YouTube. Uh, awesome. How how can we paint on skin so it won't look cartoony? How can we paint on skin so it won't look cartoony? I mean, it it depends on how you want to paint on the skin. Are you wanting to just add makeup or are you wanting to add like face paint kind of stuff? I mean, um, the biggest one in my opinion. Uh, oh yeah, refined hair. Let's see how this works with fur. Come on. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, my biggest concern whenever that is the wrong direction, 50, 50%, remember, um, <laughs> uh, my biggest concern is always with the, with the texture of the skin. So what I'll do is I'll do a frequency separation. And if you want to know what that is, we covered that yesterday. Um, and I'll do a frequency separation just to have a texture layer and I'll start painting underneath that texture layer. Um, and then the other thing that we can do also, which is extra steps for sure. Um, but after I've done some of the digital painting, uh, so let's say I want to have like a powdery look on the skin. So I'm painting in like a uh, flowery kind of texture, um, is I will either go photograph or take photos of somebody who I photographed with flower on their skin mm. and I'll paint the layer, I'll paint the color in, and then I'll also take the texture layer from, so I'll frequency separate the other image take that texture layer, put it over top, and then I'll paint in that powdery texture as well. It is a lot of extra steps. And admittedly, if your stuff is only ever going on the social media, you don't need to do it. But if you're printing it, it actually looks kind of nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's um, super interesting. Yeah. And, but I mean, like I thought about showing some of that today and I was like, it's going to take too long. <laughs> 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 too much, too much, too much. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like at the end of the day, like good painting is good painting. Um, and there's like some kind of solace in that, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're wanting to learn how to paint colors really well, uh, there's a book by James Gurney. Um, let me think here. Because there's the interaction of color, but that's just color theory. Color and Light by James Gurney. Mm. Um, so if you're, I, I don't know that. if you're old enough or not, and this is me being, not trying to be an ageist <laughs> jerk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, have you, uh, do you ever remember the Dinotopia books? Did uh, you have those when you were younger? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So James Gurney did those. Oh, okay. And he's like a master with color and light and he's so yes. good. And like that book changed how I oh, look yeah. at you know, working with color. Oh um, my God. Okay. Yeah. I had to look it up to like, remember the images because the name and yes, I definitely had these as a kid and right? I know my brother was super into them. Yeah. And like, just like amazing worlds. Like I, I like if I ever have the opportunity to meet James Gurney, I'm just going to hug him and thank <laughs> him for his contribution to those books. Because like, as a kid, those were magic. Mm. they were just like incredible stories and I just love the world that he made for like you know all the kids of our generation yeah um and but he did make also this book called color and light and it's just brilliant um, so do you recommend it yes so okay. for painting 
10 out of 10. I mean, it even translates, it even translates the digital painting, obviously, because the rules of painting are what right. they are. Right. Um, I distorted that little cat's ears a little too much here. Merp. Merp. There we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Just using warp and trying to make this little little kitty sit better. So um, cute. It's not perfect, but like I said, this is one of those images where someone, if someone was like, I want to print this big, I'd be like, oh, I'm going to go <laughs> re-photograph a cat sitting on somebody's shoulder yeah. or at least on a pillowcase. <laughs> um, it looks pretty good. Like, yeah, blended like away and you can't even tell. I feel like it'll be good enough. And that's, that's the thing that I feel like with digital artistry, we always have to remember where is the line of good enough? Because like perfect is one thing. But I feel like I wasted a lot of time trying to get perfect in my life when mm. you can just have good enough, depending yeah. on the client. And in this case today, like, yeah, good enough. Yeah. Um, by the way, these brushes, I'm so, 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 so thankful that Adobe did not get rid of these because uh, they went into the legacy brushes and oh, legacy yeah. brushes usually mean like RIP next version. They're not going <laughs> to be out. And I was just like, no, I but know these splatter brushes are so good for fur. They're yeah, just there's like the best i know there's so many things that have gotten tucked into the legacy files that i'm like oh those don't don't ever leave please yeah. don't ever leave <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like there will be a little bit of like oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> when, these, when these go away i really hope that they don't and i mean like yes of course we can just go make our own and stuff but on the topic of like we're talking about saving time like these just exist in Photoshop right now. And I love them. Yeah. And, like, and once you get used to using a certain brush too, I think, yeah. you know, that's key because you know how it's going to behave and how it flows and creates exactly. things. And yeah, a hundred percent. And that's like, again, you know, a time saver, right? Because you just, you just know, you just know exactly what you need, exactly how it's going to behave, all the things, uh, wrong direction. Totally. So there's two ways that we can handle this because these edges here are going to make me crazy. Um, is like, obviously I'm going to get rid of these weird transitions here, but I can also just start painting in some of the fur, but I can also do it once I put the background in. And so I can kind of figure out exactly where everything's going to sit. But um, I did actually a self portrait years ago for a friend of mine uh, where I was holding a little baby bunny in my hands. And this is one of those situations where I had to go get a stock file because I didn't know anybody with a little black baby bunny that I could photograph. Aww. And so I went to the stock site and I found the only bunny that I found was um, a shot at like a really low aperture. So kind of like this kitty cat. And I had to go in because it was in my hands and my hand was in focus all the way through. I had to basically re-illustrate this rabbit. Oh my and God. All the fur that was out of focus. And I was just like, Oh, how much do we care? How much do we care? And it was for a friend of mine that, you know, like was really important to me. And yeah. so I sat there and drew in fur. <laughs> wow. So Commitment. <laughs> <laughs> and this little kitty is giving me flashbacks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kelly said the cat needs laser eyes. I yeah. Know, I, might, I might have to do that. I thought about it. I was trying to figure out, I was so my sister was over last night and we were talking about this image and like what I was going to make for it and everything. And she was like, well, if you have everything in this image is like techie based and everything, she's like, what if the cat is the one thing that's pure? And I was like, oh, Aww. I kind of love that. But also laser cats with lasers in their eyes also yes. sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> It reminds me of um, in uh, Love, Death, and Robots when the yes. the episode where the cats have like taken over. <laughs> I'm so excited for season three. I know. When does that come out? Uh, the end of May, I think. Okay, cool. Yeah. I saw someone um, posted a story just with like that shot of the TV. And I was like, oh my God, is it out now? Yeah. I'm so excited. I mean, it might be out now. I mean, in Canada anyways, I think it comes out May 30th or something like that or okay. something. I have a really bad memory though. I am also like fresh concussion brain. So my brain's oh. like, this is real. And I'm like, no, then reality oh, kicks in. No. Like, oh, it's not real at all. <laughs> my yeah, brain's just like convinced. <laughs> no, I, sometimes I'm like, did I dream it? Is right? that true? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like what something, something is lying to me right now. And I don't know if it's somebody else or if it's me. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm just putting the contact shadows here for the little kitty. Uh, we'll go back to like a nice soft brush. Burp. Uh, let's see, 42 is probably a bit high. And painting with black on black, that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who says that they don't do that is a liar. Like anyone who's just like, oh yeah, no, like I always, I always have my brush right the first time. Oh, never. Never. There's a 50% chance and like a hundred percent of the time you're probably going to be wrong, which is yeah. math that shouldn't make sense. But for some reason it does. <laughs> especially, especially if you're live, that's always when it's wrong. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, no, <laughs> not even then. <laughs> True. For me. Yeah. I am, I am a mere mortal. <laughs> see here let's just soften those up those little like highlights into the pause because technically mm -hmm. um so that book by uh joseph albers the interaction of color he has like a really great section on like shadows and like how they all work together and everything and so mm. i'm constantly thinking about him when i when i do work like this um it is like kind of a dry book but he's just it's so knowledgeable there's so 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 much good information in there you said that was called The Interaction of Colors? The Interaction of Color by Joseph okay. Albers. I believe it's an iPad uh, app now or something like that, which is great. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, highly, highly, highly recommend. Uh, it's a very, very, very good resource. What color am I painting? White, of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, and I just get rid of all the paws. Okay, so... Give me some of that back. This is the problem. So I have my least favorite brush is the soft round brush for stuff like this. And I can always see it when compositors are sharing their work. You can always see transitions of soft round brushes. Hmm. And like, so I, I judge in like a, a few different, you know, lightweight competitions. Obviously I'm not a trained judge or anything like that, but it's definitely something that I'm always looking for are soft round brush masking errors. Yes, I have because, definitely yeah. seen many of those. Yeah. And I mean, like, and I am not immune. I mean, my early work is just full of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> totally full. It actually took a friend of mine who works at a video game company to point out, you know, like, hey, just so you know, these halos are its not a good thing. And I was like, oh, there's halos there. That's what that's called. I thought <laughs> <laughs> like around subjects, you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I was just like, I thought that it was like all good and like maybe nobody could see it. And obviously somebody with like 25 years of video game experience is just like, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's <laughs> so good, though, to have someone pointing that stuff out. Oh, yeah, there's nothing better. I mean, that's one of the nice things about like, you know, for people who are interested in doing like competitions and stuff. Oops, wrong way, of course. Um, <laughs> but that is the nice thing about, you know, when you do competitions or something, if you choose to enter them is, um, you know, you can get honest feedback about your work. And, you know, sometimes you agree with it and sometimes you don't, you know, like it, it all judging at the end of the day also is on um, some level opinion. Right. But I mean, like having somebody or an organization in your life that's willing to, you know, speak plainly to you, um, I think is, is like really helpful. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, anyways. So we're going to call that cat layer shadow. That's the contact shadow. And this is just the shadow. Becca said, I'm not sure what she means. Like it's a blurred mask instead of a hard line. Oh yeah. Okay. So like if we do a mask, let's just like create a new layer here. Um, let's just draw at a hundred percent. Like a heart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like when we're masking, we have these like these soft transitions here, right? When we're doing a mask with a with a like a soft transition. Um, so we're drawing with this soft, whereas if we're drawing with this hard, so let's just do an invert of this and draw like this. So here you can see the transition differences between the two heart brushes, right? So when we're looking at textures like this. So the texture on this cat's fur, right? So technically this transition here should be softer because this transition here of the fur is harder because the depth of field, right? 
So in this case here, having a soft transition would make sense if I was only masking out the cat. So if I was working here and creating this and I was compositing out this background here and I was replacing it, right? So we could get away with using like a relatively softer brush here. But one thing that can happen is we can get this haloing, right? This kind of like, you know, this transition where you can see parts of the purple or parts of the gray behind the cat itself. Yeah. Um, and up here, these transitions here are harder because this is obviously where it's more in focus. So definitely when you're masking things out, always pay attention to, you know, what are the transitions like when I'm looking at this, these guys here are more crisp, right? So here I would want to mask with a textured brush, like what I just did on the other image, but here they start getting out of focus and here you can see it getting a little bit softer. So we start blending a combination of textured brush and maybe like the blur tool on our mask, et cetera, to make this look a little bit more realistic. Um, and when we make mistakes on this, like when we use a soft round brush on all of this, we get this weird kind of haloing, um, which is kind of like what was happening here with the cat. When I turn off these shadows here. So with this edge here, this edge is a little bit softer. Obviously I was like, you know, using a textured brush here, but here the edge is quite hard. And the only reason I made a hard edge here on the, on the bottom of the paw is because I know I was going to be putting in a contact shadow. And admittedly, I intentionally chose a black cat today because black cats are easier to mask than tabbies <laughs> or light colored yeah. cats. Black is just a more forgiving color, especially for an image that I'm going to be using as like, you know, kind of a moody portrait. So does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, uh, she said, thanks so much for clarifying. So I think, uh, okay. I think that's good. Let us know though, Becca, if, um, you need any other help with that. Alrighty. How are uh, we doing on our time, by the way? Um, we have about an hour. Okay, good. Uh, Carol asked, has Renee ever tried dragging out fur or hair with the smudge brush? Yeah, I definitely do that sometimes. Um, the smudge brush, what it can also do though, is it, uh, destroys the pixels. Yeah. Um, it obviously you have to add noise back in afterwards. So instead what I'll do, especially in this case with the black cat, because it's easier <laughs> is I'll just draw in the fur and then add the noise afterwards. Cause we're going to be backlighting this. Um, so I'm going to have to add like a glowy purple fur outline anyways. Mm. Um, even though black fur technically absorbs more light, but backlit there still would be like that little bit of haloing going on. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm like saving a lot of that heavy lifting for. Cool. I'm excited yeah. for that. <laughs> Love me a good purple glow. <laughs> <laughs> I literally thought of you last night when I was color grading this because I was like, somebody loves their purple. And I, I, I have this like purple. You have the hate on for green. I have the hate on for magenta. So I feel like we're just like, oh. <laughs> There's two types of people in the world. <laughs> yep. I know there's a lot of people who have said to me, like, oh, I just hate magenta. And I'm like, okay, well, then you're just like, don't guess you're not going to like my work. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's just like a thing. Uh, yeah. Sometimes yeah. we don't like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, let me see here. I don't know if Kyle's going to be the right choice. This one, he is the right choice for later though, which is why I have it out. Uh, rough round bristle. Nope. Wrong one. So basically what I'm going to do now is, um, oil pastel, maybe, uh, I'm going to start like coloring in parts of the jacket because like I said, because I'm not, this is definitely the wrong blending mode and the wrong texture. So the reason why I don't like this is a texture. First of all, obviously this is a little bit out of focus, but, um, it just doesn't have the right pattern I'm looking for. Um, let's see here. Crayon. We were using that earlier. It looked good. Um, yeah, there we go. That'll work. Now I'm not sure if this is the right blending mode or not, but anyways, like I was saying though, um, when I work with designers and they make something custom for a shoot, I don't typically modify the clothing because obviously they're like, you know, if they make something for a shoot, they're looking to sell it if it hasn't been purchased by the client um, right. who's commissioned the shoot. But I try to not do that. But in this case here, the jacket's already sold. So <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, let's see here. So obviously this is like way too hard. So I'm just going to use the blur tool, blur tool, um, and just go over this a couple times just to get that, like a little bit softer edges, a little softer transition. Uh, what if we do color instead? No color. Obviously that doesn't work. Color. Yeah, there we go. Mm. Let's do that. That's better. 
Um, so yeah, I will use like the blur tool on like pieces like this where, you know, some parts are in focus, some parts are not like this is obviously super sharp here. So I'm not going to make any big changes there. Um, and I feel like somebody who's read the interaction of colors, looking at what I'm doing to yellow buttons that are technically metallic reflecting pink light and going like, ah, you're breaking the rules. <laughs> Yes, I am. <laughs> um, let's see here. So, I mean, one thing that's always like kind of popular, at least in cyberpunk that I like to pay attention to are these like big patches of bold color. Mm, yeah. And I think it just looks really nice. So I figure we can add some like nice yellow to these. This is the part that can get a little bit satisfying because it's a little bit, a little bit like masking, you know, mm -hmm. where you're just like, oh yeah, you just get to like I, relax and paint by numbers. I know. I always get like sucked into these being like, oh, wow. Yeah. And then I'm like, <laughs> oh, I still have to talk. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Nothing else exists. Everything is fine. <laughs> It's so funny. I've been like watching a lot of random tutorials and stuff, continuing to always learn. And like, sometimes as I'm watching tutorials, I'll go, oh, wow. Yeah. I, I like that. And then I'm like, wait, I'm not hosting. And then vice versa. <laughs> like, oh, I'm watching a tutorial. Wait, no, I'm hosting. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Brain is like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's like today is a good day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Good morning, oh. Anna. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> totally get it. Not that I've done a lot of hosting, to be fair, um, but I understand what you mean. Yeah. It's like, what am I doing today? Yeah. Yeah. There's this really great digital painter, Alex Ruiz, and I may or may not be pronouncing his name correctly. Um, but he has this really great YouTube channel where like he has these time-lapse edits put to music and I just sit there and zone out. <laughs> yes. And yeah. it's just like, it's so relaxing. It's just so nice to just, you know, listen. <laughs> yeah. Alex Rees, how do you spell R-U-I-Z. So my Canadian accent is probably butchering how you pronounce it. So I'm sorry, Alex, <laughs> but um, yeah, he just has like a really, really cool art style and it's very, I mean, he was a concept artist for years. He actually, I think he started on um, The Simpsons for a really long time. Oh. And, uh, and you know, has since, you know, he started working as a concept artist and then he got into, um, you know, doing his own like digital art stuff now. And it's very, it's a very like refreshing style. It's kind of fun, a little bit, a little bit wild. Yeah. I, cathartic to watch. It looks like super dreamy is that him like yeah yeah okay i'm into this i'll have to check that out yeah alex ruiz r-u-i-z yeah he does he does super cool stuff um and i'm just kind of into it oh you know what's great is that this is super unplanned but also totally works so steve also has a cat and there's cat hair on his pants and i was like yes <laughs> oh so good one of the few times we're having cat hair is like perfect right on this yep. totally worked out <laughs> Let's see here. I feel like color's not quite doing it. Overlay, soft. Oh, soft light looks better. Let's see what that looks like in the rest of it. But let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, I mean, so like one of my favorite things about like the YouTube world, and admittedly, like I don't spend a lot of time on YouTube, but I mean, like I remember what it was like starting out in this like a bunch of years ago and like trying to find tutorials to do anything was just like impossible it was so hard it was like just trying to pull water from stone yeah and um like there's just so many just brilliant artists out there that you can just like go and follow what they're doing and yeah it's just amazing i just love so much how things have changed on that front that it's just like you know, inspiration is everywhere. Like people always say like, well, how do you get inspired? And I'm just like, how can you not like, like there's like the combination of course of like looking at artwork going like, okay, I'm never going to be that good. And I should just quit while I'm like, right. I should just quit now, which <laughs> totally get it because like there's a lot of artists out there that do that to me. Yeah. Um, but you got to like keep your head up, but like for like ideas, inspiration, man, there's just so, so, so much. And there's so many artists out there that like people don't even know who they are they're just these like you know tiny little channels on like tiktok or whatever 
and like the stuff that they're producing is just so cool like i have like it's one of my favorite things to say because i know you know i got started in this industry and i know that the kids who grew up with like and who are growing up now with like ar and vr in their hands on their tablets like these kids are going to grow up and there's going to be a percentage of them that go into art and they are going to be unstoppable monsters and i love it so much like i literally yes. can't wait to be expired like as much as i want to be able to be like i want to do this as long as i can um like the things like they're gonna do to stuff to art what we did to art because i mean like before photoshop became like you know especially before the creative cloud it became like accessible to everyone you know the arts world just like this totally you know it just like exploded and i i just i am so excited about that and um, I really wish that more people kind of felt <laughs> that way about it as well, where it's just like, no, this is such like an incredible time. Just like right now is like the best time ever to be a nerd because like, you know, <laughs> we have like, you know, Moon Knight and all these amazing shows just like coming out on Disney and they're like, you know, there's the good and the bad, but like, it's so awesome to have so many options. Yes. And like, there's so much weird behavior about it online where I'm just like, no, do you understand like how good this is? Like, do you remember, you don't remember the nineties and the eighties and you don't remember what we had to put up with as what was going to be an acceptable nerd culture reference. I'm like, oh yeah. And these nerds grew up and now they're in positions of power. And that exactly same thing is going to happen with the arts industry with what we're doing because these kids, you know, they're five, six, seven years old now. And generationally by the time, like they're in positions of power with these companies, they'll change everything. And I'm like, I think I that's so cool. I think that's I so fun. <laughs> I know. And I, I think about it often in like ways that we can kind of, um, adapt and like keep up with it too, you know, but I yeah. also, I don't know. I think, yeah, the way you expressed it is so true. It's kind of nice to maybe not as well. Yeah. Like you just can like sit back and just and like watch. enjoy and watch. Exactly. I mean, like by the time these kids are in positions of power, like, you know, I will hopefully be retired if that's even a thing that's possible <laughs> by the time I'm there. Um, and then you just get to sit back and just be a fan and just like bask yeah. in how awesome, like what these people are going to do to the, to the industry and, you know, be terrified by it and inspired by it all at the same time. I think that's just going to be so cool. <laughs> totally. I know. I'm, I'm so curious to see kind of what happens with like AR and everything. Someone asked me the other day if I have done any AR stuff to my work and I'm like, no, that's so over my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, I don't, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, so the secret squirrel thing that I haven't talked about with anyone ever yet is, um, I'm working on an art book and it's an AR art book Ooh. and that's what the Kickstarter is for in August when it goes live. So if anybody is interested in that, that is all I'll say about it right now, but wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah very it'll... curious about that. I am excited and terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Cause Sounds it is so cool. So much work. Oh my and God. when did you say it comes out? Uh, I'm hoping to launch a Kickstarter in August. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that's yeah. the plan anyways. I will definitely keep an eye on that. <laughs> I will be so <laughs> annoying. If you follow me on social media or whatever, I will be so annoying for like July and August. So <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I have, I have launched things before and I know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, I have never, this will be my first one. I've never tried anything like this before. Oh, it's going to so. be so good. I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah. But if it doesn't scare you, then it's not big enough, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> Whoa. And does it ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just grabbed, this is another Adobe stock image. Like I said, I just kind of went like pilfering. Um, and so I am I flipped it because obviously when he raises his arm, he needs to be reading it in a way that makes sense to him. Mm. But this is still technically backwards here. So I'm going to flip it horizontal as well. And now he'll be able to read it when he flips his arm up. So those are like little reality things that tend to break. What does Joel Grimes say? Like sell the fake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Um, we should put some of these into groups. Oh God, I have mystery layers. Oh yeah. Wait, that's the circles. <laughs> <laughs> 
let's just take the cat and this and put that into a group. Cat. <laughs> oh, perfect. I put my caps lock on right on. Uh, let's do this to here. Actually, we can put the paint jacket underneath here as well. What are you? Oh, yeah, right. That's the just thing we see. This is why we group things. Okay. Yep. Group. <laughs> <laughs> Carol wants to know if you've saved lately. I haven't, but that's a really good idea considering <laughs> my computer's been like a little spicy. Thank yes. you. Carol always <laughs> has the save reminder. So that's <laughs> very important. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. We're going to save this as a tip for now. Save. Right on. Yeah. Thanks for that. Because I definitely forget that from time to time. <laughs> yeah. I never remember to save. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So we are going to tame these guys here. HUV. We're going to blur the bottom one. Gaussian blur. And we're going to blur this a little bit more. So it's like the glow. And this tough one here, we're going to add a little bit of noise because it's 3D rendered and it doesn't. Oops, that's the median. That's the wrong one. Do, do, do. Add noise. Pardon my nose. Okay, so mm -hmm. that's looking cool. So now, obviously, what we need is the light because this thing is glowing. So underneath here, uh, we're going to call this light paint. Perfect. And we're going to put this on to, we're going to try overlay first. And X. I'm always so curious to see how people do their glows. Like everyone does it differently. So, right. Yeah. Oh, that's great. so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Give me all the glows. Yeah. Let's see. Soft. No, we're just, this is one of the times where a soft round brush is the right tool for the job. Yes. Um, now I'm going to add too much at first, add a little bit up here. And technically there would be a little bit coming down here too, I suppose. Yeah. Kind of spilling onto the, yeah. And I guess a little onto his hand too. Yeah, exactly. Just a tiny bit, like right here on the back of his hand. Yeah. Just a reminder to everyone, we are going to be doing the artist spotlight in about 20 minutes and uh, very excited for that today. If you or um, a friend want to submit themselves for the artist spotlight, be sure to click on the artist spotlight tab that is in the chat and fill out the form. Yay. Artist spotlights are the best. I feel like I that's another like best thing in the, in our industry is being able to highlight other people who do great work. Absolutely. Yeah, that's like my favorite. Uh, let's see here, soft and big. So basically I'm just like following the patterns on the jacket here. Flows a little high. Do, 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 do. Because all glow, it doesn't really it doesn't really just like when it's wrapping around fabric and stuff, it doesn't just blob. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The texture really helps make a difference. Um, and I got a little bit of edge here. So on the back of his hand here, I'm just going to increase the hardness of the brush. Yes. Dennis, uh, Dennis mentioned using creating glows with the plugin called Honoric. Yes. Um, that is an amazing uh, plugin. Amazing. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. So much love to Mario for that plugin. It's so good. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. It's, it's incredible. It's been like a major game changer for me. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. That's another one of those plugins where you're just like, thank you for existing. I know <laughs> I have this piece, um, where I did like all this glow with jellyfish in a bottle and like floating on the ocean. I saw um, that. That's awesome. Thank you. But all of that glow was created by hand painting slowly and surely. That was before I knew that the plugin existed and oh, 
Oh my God. It's like one of the pieces that I love the most and I'm most proud of, um, because it took that much time to like delicately paint each Blood, section. And tears. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm like, Oh, I have something much simpler. I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> oh my God. That would be so, oh, so much. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot. Took a long time. Oh man. Yeah. No kidding. Um, so this is another one of the things that I uh, was able to render out in Boris. So, um, this is another, like I was looking on stock sites for like ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And finally I was just like, nah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, we're just going to do this now. Uh, so we're going to put you into a group, call you H U D and we are going to put you onto that looks not too bad. Let's start here for now. Okay, so one thing that I want, and I don't know if I'm actually doing this wrong. This is one of those things where it's like, am I doing this the long and hard way or not? I merge everything up into here and then I will do my select subject. Mm. Um, and I can never remember, pardon me, if it's like, if I'm doing that wrong. <laughs> um, if I'm like, you know, uh, if I actually have to do this step. <laughs> Oh yeah. So right. I'm going to turn all that off first so that I can see what I'm actually doing. But here, like all of my stuff, now I have my, you know, transitions and everything and I can go mm, smooth. Yeah. And it's all just like in one handy little piece. And then I can just save the mask for later. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I feel like if that works for you and I, this seems like a good workflow to me, it makes sense. Right. I hope anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so um, I did this. Uh, I did this this uh, workshop years and years and years ago, and in uh, the Netherlands. And there was an artist there whose work I just admire so much. And he showed up for the workshop, and I was just like, "Oh God! Like, why are you here? Like, I can't <laughs> teach you anything. I look up to you. Like, why are you here?" Um, <laughs> And I was just like, oh no. And so I'm sitting there teaching the class and it's like, you know, it's early in my career and like a little less confident. Yeah. And as I was teaching, I was like, this is right, right? Like, <laughs> I, I'm not. And was he like, what did he, he say? Like, he was just like, oh no, no, you're fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just like, so like, oh God, why is this guy here? His work is so good. Like, <gasps> yeah. Ah, like, you know, people say, well, don't meet your men, your, uh, you know, your, the people that you look up to, whatever that quote is. And right. I was just like, yeah, but he was really nice, but also like, it's so intimidating when these people show up to your classes where it's just like, oh man. Yeah. You're like, why are you here? Yeah. But like, I'm so glad you're here, but also I'm going to cold sweat in the bathroom and huff into a paper bag. <laughs> it's so true though. I mean, it's, it's interesting because, um, I think, uh, why you know why we do these adobe lives too with people of all levels and people of all levels watching is because you can always learn something no matter where yeah. you are in your own career and your artist journey or where the teacher is in their career like you're constantly yeah. just ebb and flowing and and learning off each other and i think that's really awesome yeah 100 percent. i totally agree with you yeah uh what if i just go to normal here. See this pink glowing. I'm not a big fan, but I'm going to paint around. So normally like these edges, I would be way more specific about, but we're going to yeah. paint some glow anyways. So whatever. I'm going to care a little bit less than maybe I normally would. <laughs> yeah. I think, I don't think you have to worry about those details. You can. Yeah. Yeah. This is the kind of stuff where it's like, I fall down the rabbit hole for a few hours and it's like, see you on the other side, guys. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. But we are definitely going to handle this for. Mark, 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 mark. And the other thing that we get to draw on this one is whiskers, which is just so satisfying. It's so yes. cute and soft and pretty. Uh, maybe slightly higher flow to save some time. I'm so curious to see what you're going to do with the background. 
<laughs> like, me too <laughs> anxiously awaiting <laughs> I know what I did yesterday we'll see what it looks like today <laughs> but those Kyle's brushes are featured heavily so yeah and I'm like thinking about it as I'm working on this I'm like maybe I don't actually have to fill in the softness on the back of the cat because technically the other side of Steve is soft too and like mm. this would have been shot with that and I'm like I'm basically just justifying how to get myself out of work <laughs> <laughs> I know I do that all the time. Yeah. Like, will anyone notice? Um, cause yeah, we've already decided that this is going to be one that if someone wants printed big, I'm just going to have to reshoot a couple things. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see here. I got a little bit of hair up here that we can probably fix a bit. Burr, 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 burr. But just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Because this is out of focus here. So, you know, back of the cat's butts, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. It's Justified. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Now, if we go, oh, wait, I'm going to save my mask because now that I've finished it, but good enough anyway, I'm going to save this, turn all this on, turn this off, and move this to the bottom and call mm. it mask. So smart that you do that. I know someone mentioned that yesterday in the chat um, about how it was a new tip and idea for them to save the mask like that. So, Oh man, it just saves so much work. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. So one thing that's off here a little bit is our contrast. Can we, can I get away with it? Screen. Ooh, that's not bad. What if we stack them? Hmm. So, oops, that's the group. That's not what I wanted. Control J. You're mixing up shortcuts. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Getting a little bit of mangledness there. If I go to normal here and I put you over top of here. And then I take you and I reduce this. There we go. Now our contrast is starting to match a little bit more. And that glowy stuff here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. I'm, I can live with that. Yeah. Cool. Right on. All right. So from here, what I want to do, uh, probably add the rim light by now. So and again, if I had been thinking about how I was going to light this and when I was photographing it, I would have just shot it with ring light, but I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those little things are so key to keep in mind, but I yeah. feel like I, I feel like you'll do a good job of adding it back. <laughs> I'm confident. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> so, let's see here. Um, I'm on the mask right on. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, all right. Now, invert. We are in a normal blending mode. Let's try overlay or hard light. Some version of that overlay looks pretty good. Pew, pew, pew. Reduce that flow. I'm going to use a textured brush on the hair because that's going to make the most sense. Burr, 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 burr. I guess technically it would wrap around a little bit more, but whatever. And here. Reduce that flow just a little bit. Actually, I'm going to erase part of that. Do that again. Do, do. Dave B. said, hi, Renee, just catching up. You would be amazing at 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. You know, we just need the Matrix game and just like plug it in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've actually started. Um, there's a, a 3D artist in Ireland and I've kind of been poking him about like, hey, so one on ones, maybe <laughs> mm, that would be so awesome. Yeah, so he uh, he recommended getting into like Daz 3D and stuff like that because I have Blender, I have Blender on here, but um, I mean I tried doing like the donut tutorial and stuff yeah. like that, and I'm just I like I get started and then I stop and then I get started again and I'm like I can learn this and then I stop. <laughs> That's exactly how I am too. Yeah. Like I just can't, just not happening. Yeah, and like like millions of people are learning this brand new every day around the world. So obviously it can be done. Like, I don't like, we can learn this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but for some reason, we're stubborn or something. I don't know. I know. Um, 
Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly. I feel like the biggest thing is for me, it's like enjoyment. And I'm like, do I enjoy making things in 3D? No. Yeah. Like, but do I enjoy like putzing around for hours in Photoshop painting something um, with glow? A hundred percent. Yeah. So, <laughs> That's you know, fair. yeah. And especially if it's not for a client, then I think that's what's really keeping me from going in and learning it is like I would rather kind of like create it in Photoshop and that's fair. even yeah. if I'm limited like that's what I enjoy you know yeah and what is life if we can't just do the things that we like to do exactly yeah so I understand that <laughs> okay so a little bit of a little bit a little bit of something something there now to go in and get the rest of this so mask, invert, brush. And now we're gonna use that soft brush because it's gonna go the fastest because there's still like a fair amount of stuff to do on this yet, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see here. Do, 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 do. Definitely doing this like relatively quickly, but it's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I mean, we can we can go fast with like the painting of the glow and and um, you know, as long as we're just talking through anything that you're doing that's different than oh yeah. Well, this is just soft brown brush stuff, yeah. so yeah. Some nice My analysis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes painting is... gets pretty monotonous though. Like, oh, those are the ties. I was like, why is there a section missing? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, one thing that I always try to keep in mind is like, if there's technically a light coming from overhead here, the stuff that would be shadowed by this light, if it's backlit, so right here underneath this collar, that technically would be purple because this light is yeah. coming from over top. So shadow, if you, sh if you shoot with gels, right, then um, you'll see that whatever is in shadow, if it's backlit, especially yeah. it goes the color of the environment, the sh like the gel that you have in there. Yeah. I but as soon as it goes to light, it goes back to the normal light it's color. So important, like to, for people that want to do this kind of work, like whether it be cyberpunk or any sort of, um, rim light and, and glow work is really like understanding the way light works. Like what you just said is yeah. so so spot on and so key because we start, you have to look at it and study it and be like, okay, if I'm shooting with a pink light, what is it doing? Where is it bouncing? Where, what is it doing to his skin? And then that yeah. helps create more realistic compositions and composites. Yeah, exactly. And definitely, I mean, that James Gurney book goes over a lot of that and it's just like, it's just so good. Um, I'm just going in here with like a really small brush, just going over the hair strands individually um and again normally i would spend a little more time on it but meh. for the purposes of today it's good enough yeah <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here so i think we're looking pretty good not bad not bad now what happens if i duplicate that and i change this blending mode that looks good, except for here is a little strong. So we'll mask that out. So how'd we get you to do magenta today? Is this for me? It is definitely for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking, I was like, wait, she said she hates magenta. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I gift to you. <laughs> yes. Although it's funny because your blue light and your hair and like the reflection on your face is kind of a little magenta. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Calling me out. I hear, I see what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> she may hate it, but it's here. <laughs> yeah. It is subconscious. <laughs> <laughs> and look, I have like green behind me. So we're switched. Yeah, right. Yeah. Look at us go. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Feeling called out. Okay, you can be less. You can be a little less. Actually, that should be a little bit more burr, 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 because that's a shadow. Add a little bit, oh, too much. <laughs> 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 
So mm -hmm. you are on um, soft light blending mode. Yeah, and... I, so I did the original on overlay and then I duplicated it and then made a second one on soft light. And cool. so this one, I'm just like filling in to like these shadow areas here where technically there would be like more magenta wraparound. Cool. So I'm gonna like purple up the kitty a little bit more cause that fur is really luminant or luminance yeah. has a good luminance. I'm gonna make the eye like bright green. I'm gonna do it later because uh, with the color grading that I'm gonna do, it would probably just disappear. So here, you can probably stick a little bit of magenta in here in those shadows. That looks not too bad. I mean, the rim light is a little strong, but Let's see. what if I just put a mask on here? It's just bugging me here a little bit. Yeah, because there's so much light coming from overhead here that it wouldn't technically be quite that bright, but hair is semi transparent. So it would be stronger there, but it would definitely be stronger in the shadows than it would be on the highlight parts of the body. I'm curious um, to see too, when you do like your final color grading, how it kind of, I feel like it will tie nicely together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I have lots of friends who like, you know, do color grading as they're building these composites and I tend to just like get myself close oops, uh, and then, you know, smash it all together in ACR. <laughs> yep. That's exactly how I am too. Like I yeah. have seen so many people who color grade each piece throughout the process and and then I just like I will composite everything and get my glow right and then do the final color grade like in camera raw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, same, same, same. Um, one thing that I'm noticing here, so this is on screen blending mode. So some of these little blobs are a bit too bright and I'm gonna add a bunch of flares anyways, but because I have two blending modes here, uh, I'm just taking the screen mode ones and just like pulling them over just so they're not quite as blown out. Hmm. Um, Cause that was one thing when I noticed what I made yesterday is that the highlights were real highlighted and like sometimes that looks great and sometimes it doesn't. So yeah. I'm gonna try to correct yesterday's thing that was bugging me. Okay, so should be good there. What else are we doing here? We need flares. No cyberpunk thing is finished without a buttload of flares. Now yes. where are we? There we go. Open with. Do, do, do. And these are just like a bunch of like shapes and stuff that I've got over the years. So we're gonna call this background. I feel like you probably have a really good library of lots of different things to use. Terabytes. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Terabytes and terabytes and terabytes. I mean, like it's the same with you. Like anybody who does this a lot, we just have so much stuff. Yeah. 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 And it's just kind of how it goes. I really need to get more organized about it. Are you, do you have your stuff kind of like categorized and or uh, just like a big folder. That's mine's a big folder of mess. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> I have it sort of organized. So I have like a master folder that says stock and then it goes subcategorized between like stock that I've shot, um, uh, stock that I've purchased, stock that I've like found like free to use, mm. um, royalty free, and then stock that was given to me um, by friends and stuff like that. And that's so that's awesome. typically, um, and then from there, like, you know, when I photograph my own back plates and stuff, I, um, we're going to duplicate the same as the other one. Uh, and then from there, what I'll do is, um, that's a nice glow. I like that. <laughs> it's like very Bob Rossi, Let's put like a nice yes. happy little glow there. <laughs> 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 um, I just like squirrel brained myself there, but, uh, yeah, when it, like, when I'm working with all of these kinds of things. I don't need color overlay, outer glow, bevel and gloss looks terrible, perfect. Um, like, yeah, I basically just, I try to have it sorted by like the location in the year. Mm -hmm. And then like underneath that, it's like, you know, is, are these particle effects? So like, are these the particle effects that I've shot? Are these the particle effects that I purchased? Um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, like that combination of stuff. So cool. Yeah. Typically I'm, I'm how I work. I'm curious how people have things organized because I, I have heard of people doing like going 
really in depth and going into Lightroom and actually tagging everything with the proper like that's this the is smart sunset. way to do it. Like that, yeah, <laughs> that's genius. But yeah. I every time I'm like, today I am going to sit down and edit our Lightroom catalog. Nope, doesn't happen. Or I get like <laughs> a few rows down. I'm like, oh my God, remember when we went here? This is so cool. Let's I'm yeah. gonna edit this. <laughs> that's exactly what happens. That's exactly what happens. I call it hard drive dumpster diving. Yes. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> Where it's like, that's exactly what's going on is like, yeah, uh, you know, I'm going to organize stuff. And then I'm just like, oh, man, this is so awesome. I love this. Yeah. yeah. We should make it's... something. And then there goes the day. Yep. So 100 <laughs> percent. It is a battle. <laughs> yeah. Through and through. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you're at a stopping point for the artist spotlight? Yeah. Let's go save. Awesome. Because that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, shout out to Carol for reminding us to yeah. save everything. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. <laughs> I'm gonna have yes. a Carol moment from now on in my head. Be like, what would Carol save? <laughs> yes, save. <laughs> All right, everyone. So it is time for the artist spotlight. And mm-hmm. um, Renee, if you just want to bring that up, hundred percent. I super can. Um, my artist spotlight is Rebecca Millen. Yes. Awesome. So. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, Rebecca. I don't know if you are watching today, but if you are, thank you for being our artist spotlight this week. I'm super excited to look at her work. It's beautiful. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's, um, as far as I know, she's a self-portrait artist. She's, um, I can't like, we're, we're friendly acquaintances, but we've never met in person. Um, I basically just like explode in her comment section all the time whenever she shares stuff because (laughs) I just it's so different from what I do like one of the things that I love about her work is that her dodge and burning has this very like graphical shape to it and how like you know these lines are very crisp and clean and like it it's nothing like what I do and it has a very like Klimt like feel to it and I'm sure I'm pronouncing that completely wrong but um most of us know like this painter yes um and it just it like the shapes and everything that she uses it definitely kind of gives me a little bit of those vibes which is why I just really love it so much um you know like that little touch of the highlight here and like this this shape with that little highlight and like the gradient I mean all of this it's it's just it's very unique you know um and she has like a great use of color. So, so interesting. So are they all photos? Um, I don't actually, I mean, cause like, I don't actually know how she works at all, which I kind of love, <laughs> but I believe they're photographs. Um, oh my God. Yeah. I don't know if she's working in 3d. I mean, I would have to ask her cause I didn't message her about this and ask her process before I feature before I offered to feature her. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, these, these, they look photographic to me with like, you know, digital painting pieces added into it. Oh, so cool. Like, I'm just so, so blown away by the way every type of art is like tied together here and that you can't figure out how it's made. Yeah. Yeah. I, I super, super love it. Like I'm always looking at it going like, okay, which part of this was photoshopped and which part of this was done like in camera like I think this here the mask was spray painted gold but maybe it wasn't right and yeah. I mean that's my favorite kind of art when I look at it and I'm not quite sure which parts of it she made and like which parts of it are real and which parts of it are digital and if any of it's 3d or not like this is a portrait she did of somebody else like I just think yeah. it's really fun and it's it's like it's refreshing and um yeah, I like I will never make artwork like this, which is my favorite kind of art to consume because yeah. it's just so inspiring. Like I just look at it and I'm like, nope, my brain does not operate that <laughs> way at all. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. And I'm like, I'm curious with the one um, that was like all white. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like doing white on white that on white. One. That's so hard. Yeah. Like, did yeah. she paint someone or if that's her to paint herself? Like, is it? Yeah fully just desaturated I'm so confused and so amazed at the same time (laughs) yeah exactly like I have so many questions because doing white on white on white is just as hard as doing black on black on black and still retaining like detail but also it's not just like a desaturated white you know like it's not just like a light image that's been put to black and white 
normally anyways because anytime i see that like it doesn't look like this and yeah. those are just like little creative mysteries for me that i just i just love like you know these little pieces here like i can i think i can dissect how most of it was made but i definitely can't dissect how all of it was made and that for me is like a real form of like very beautiful artwork to yes. stick in my brain and just let it like sit there and like take up space on shelves yeah you there's know. something about this that gets me like super fired up and and like you said you know it's not the type of art i would ever create nor can create mm -hmm. and there's something about it that makes me feel like this is so cool so exciting like it makes me want to go create because it's so yeah. different and unique and like everything i mean look at this look at this photo the way the makeup is coming down the way the little metal thing is just poking her cheek enough to create this beautiful shadow yeah. and indentation yeah. and then like the sharp lines like oh i'm obsessed <laughs> yeah yeah and i super love it and i love that like you know the little dex like to textures of like the little tiny facial hairs like those are all still in there like it hasn't just been like blurred out which every now and then I do when I'm like, okay, we need to hurry. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. like there's, there's like a lot of attention, attention to detail. I mean, like it's really, really beautiful dodge and burning work. Um, like her color, her use of color is just like, it's all over the map and I love it because I mean, for me, I definitely stick with what I'm comfortable with. And, you know, when I look at her work, I'm just like, man, like her color palette use is just all over the map. And that's just like, that shows like a level of skill that at least with color, I'm quite envious of. So. Absolutely, I completely agree. That one with the red and the white, so amazing. Oh right? God. Yeah, yeah, and I love this one here. Like, this is so cool. This is this is Lily and Lou. She's another like ridiculously good photographer. But when I saw they finally collaborated together, I was like, yeah, that's cool. Oh, and like, so cool. Like, just like these shapes, like it's just, it's her like the the shapes with face retouching is just so fun like i haven't seen and maybe there are people out there doing it i don't know because i don't i just haven't found them yet and there's millions of artists on the internet but like this is just so unique how she retouches the face yeah yeah um, i've never seen it before either and like i it's that's why when i first looked at it it's like what am i looking at here mm -hmm. you know like what type of art is this because it looks like paintings but then you have yeah so cool yeah yeah exactly and like you know the difference between like the texture of luminance between the mouth circle here and the rest of the face like yeah yeah those are just like they're really really nice little details that like yeah I could probably try and figure out how some of it's done but I definitely can't figure out how all of, how all of it's done and it's just so fun for me I know Oh, I'd love to see her work like huge in galleries and she probably has done that before. And I feel yeah, like I, I mean, could just stare at these for hours. Exactly. Yeah. I like, it's just so fun, you know, and you know, sometimes how she's using like, you know, the flipped pieces here, but then it's not perfectly symmetrical all the way, but then yeah. parts of it are, you know, and it's just, yeah, it's just really inspiring stuff. And uh, so I think that more people should see the work that she's doing and be inspired by it. And, you know, totally. like, obviously don't try to be here because none of us can. <laughs> <But> <laughs> don't even try. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah, these are the kind of things that like, you know, I really hope that, you know, one day if she isn't already, because I, I don't know, I've never asked that, like, you know, hopefully these are in places that are printed big and people can really... Cause I mean, Instagram is such a, it, it hides so much of the work that goes into these. Like, you know, these are, these are masked. Yeah. <laughs> like those little tiny details and everything like that's wow. masked out. That's so much work. Wow. And on Instagram, we lose the hours that go into this. And even on the internet, even if you're looking at this on like a big screen, you know, the, the dedication that goes into the details of what makes these so cool. Like on top of like, yeah, okay. The styling's great. The jewelry is great, et cetera. But lots of us have access you can buy jewelry similar to this and none of us are going to make this right yeah and that's such a good point i love it i love it so much mm -hmm. like i think this one here is actually one of my favorites and it's definitely like an older one of hers um but yeah rebecca if you're watching and i don't know if you are but if you are uh, i would super love a print of this <laughs> I yeah will totally buy one <laughs> oh, i know i was just trying to see if she had any sort of prints or anything but yeah i'm honestly not sure like i said i don't know a lot about her other than like i mostly just live 
in her comment section being like, oh my God, this is so cool. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I've heard nothing but good things, but also like, what? Like, this is so awesome. Oh, so cool. Oh my God. Oh, it's so awesome. Wow. Yeah. So wow. yeah, this is, this is basically it. <laughs> You know, and like so, this one here again, like it, it like has that really fun, like, it's just so cool. It's so inspiring to see. I just, it, it makes me want to like go in a whole different direction with things that I create and like to still have the type of stuff I create, but also try something like this, you know, yeah. just to challenge myself because it's so beyond anything that I'm used to. Yeah. I'm like, I think I'm, I'm having this these few weeks of like being very inspired by such different type of art right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, amazing. Love it. Yeah. Love the little triangle. Right. Yeah. Like it's, it's just, it's so well thought out and it's very like considerate and purposeful. Yeah. Or at least that's how I perceive it anyways. Maybe not. Maybe she just like rolls into the studio one day and is just like, let's throw some stuff on my face and see what happens. I don't know. But yeah. to me, this looks like there's a lot of intention and planning behind them. Absolutely. Um, and story too. Yeah. And it's just, yeah. it's just real fun. Like even here, like the use of like the oil brush. Yeah. You need to cross the face and like the hand coming through the paper and the, like, it's just, yeah. Very it's cool. It's very, 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 very fun. And um, yeah, I mean, so like, this is the kind of art that I would, I would try. So like, I would probably like just pulling one randomly but I would look at something like this and I would try to duplicate it as close as I possibly could and obviously never share it ever, 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 because that's not the point. But basically just to see like, can I get close? Right. And I don't think with these I can. <laughs> I know. Yeah. And I think that's a great exercise for people to do, like mm -hmm. not sharing it because we don't want to look like we're copying someone, but yeah. doing doing it for yourself to see how close you can get to see like can you create something like this and and that's really fun because usually what happens is you then incorporate your own style into it and it becomes yeah. something totally different anyways totally yeah exactly yeah. like I well, love the use of like all these like pattern brushes and stuff here yeah. and like I just never think about that and I look at it, I'm like oh yeah like this I know how to do and I just never think to do it yeah and I'm just like but why don't I? And I'm like, I'm too busy hand painting. Because like <laughs> a part of me is masochistic, I guess. <laughs> yeah, definitely something to aspire to. And again, congratulations, Rebecca. It was an honor looking at your work today. And I am definitely going to be following along. Got a new fan right here and hopefully some people <laughs> from the chat. Um, so we have about uh, 12 minutes left. Awesome. Well, yes. then we can crank through this like pretty fast. Let's throw yeah. some flares. Do, 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 open with. Because the biggest thing that every cyberpunk thing needs is a ton of flares. So, yes. mark, mark, mark. let's put some of these guys here. Hey, Robert, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. For anyone just tuning in right now, we are finishing up Renee's cyberpunk design here that we've been working through and uh, going over some glow and adding different flares and elements. Of course, got to have the black cat on the shoulder because no cyberpunk piece is complete without a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Every cyberpunk piece needs cats. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's see here, put these on the screen. Screen of with do, 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 do. invert, and so now we get to see how fast I can really work when I'm like, oh god, we have to hustle. Go, I know, go, gotta go. finish it up. Yeah, Pressure's exactly. On. <laughs> Just like pop these in here, invert screen. Oops. Because from here, basically from here, it's color grading. And so that goes like relatively quick. Let's put you down here. That's on screen. I basically have like a whole bunch of flares open. I'm just going to like one by one by one. Invert. Green. 
Let us know in the chat while Renee is finishing up here, if you have any other questions for her, um, maybe regarding the piece that we're working on today or what we did yesterday, uh, client work, any of the things that might be top of your mind that you want to know about now is your chance to ask them. And don't forget that you can rewatch these anytime. All of Adobe Live's content is on Behance at any time that you might want to go back and uh, work along with the artists and create something. So you can watch these again from yesterday and today at any point. Okay. Uh, control F. Yeah, I'm just adding like a blur here to the last of these. Blur. Galaxy and blur. Okay. Alrighty. And we need like one more flare. <laughs> yes. One more. Maybe one more. five more. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, we need all of them, but <laughs> uh, let's see. You didn't open. Why didn't you open? Open with Photoshop. Thank you. Let's put you down here. Okay. Invert screen. And a little bit of blur. Okay, so now we're just gonna pop into ACR, smash out some color grading. My poor computer's like, oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the best so part. weirdly enough, I'm gonna try the color grade that we made yesterday with Varden, but I'm gonna change it up a bunch. So let's see here. Let's give us a little more shadows, a little more vibrance. How are we doing on curves? Detail. Yeah, we probably need that color noise reduction. <laughs> Hmm. Oh, saturation we can leave our oranges and color grading i'm not going to touch that yet because we're going to go down into calibration and see where this can go because this is part of the reason why i save so many of my color profiles like when i make them because I can just like do stuff like this and I can get it done so quickly if I need to. Yeah. So this is looking pretty good here. Saturation. Let's see. Let's try that. Now, if we put this blending mode onto color, Ah, and we reduce this a little bit and then we're going to merge up again and let's try one more and let's see where this takes us. Oh, right. Oh, I know what I'm forgetting. Cancel. I saved this because remember there was that, um, that brush that I wanted to show you that. Oh yeah. Of, uh, yeah. So I saved this yesterday because it did take quite a while to make because just the rendering. So basically what this is, I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna put this over here. So it's this texture, which is um, this uh, Kyle's pastel and then Kyle's charcoal. Mm. And then basically what I did was I put these onto soft light like this. And then I went and I went to my blending modes. Do, 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 do. I just started like pulling this through. Maybe soft light isn't the right one we wanna use. Let's scan through these quickly. Cause like my favorite thing about cyberpunk, overlay looks better. My favorite thing, thing about cyberpunk is like all the textures and everything that you can get in it. So I basically just like paint the color texture. So I sample, I take that brush that he made, um, one of these guys here and then I just sample colors and paint stripes and then put the blending mode on and then played with the blend if tools. And so now we have like this, which I think looks really nice. Um, I'm gonna create another soft light layer here, but I'm gonna use a soft round brush. Do, do, do. That's super smart to add textures like that. I just think it looks really nice. I think it works really well. So here I'm just like 
sampling some colors. It's a little bit dark. We can go a little bit lighter. And is this something that you would ever post on your Instagram or? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. I definitely would for sure. For sure. Cool. Now if I duplicate that and put this onto a soft light mode, there we go. Now we're starting to look a little cyberpunk. Yeah. This is starting to like pull together really nicely. So merge this back up and then I will hop into ACR once more. And obviously when you're merging up like this, um, it makes for bigger files. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's fine. Everything is fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's <laughs> fine. All the things. Let's see here. Uh, color mixer, color grading. Let's grab our shadows. Do, do, do. Yeah. Right. I feel like there's something to this here. Yeah. I know. Um, I love like kind of the little soft blurriness to it. Very yeah. dreamy. Well, I mean, that's one thing that like I'm really guilty of when I'm working on these images is like there's a part of my brain that's like, it has to be perfectly sharp all the time. And it's like, but it actually doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Especially when we're making stuff like this where it's not representing reality like at all. Exactly. Um, you know, there's no reason why we can't go in with this with like some textured brushes and just start like mucking about um it just doesn't always have to be this way so let's go back into calibration see if there's any other thing here that maybe i want to try do, do, do. kind of like that and my blue primary yeah there we go mm. that's the magic sauce a little bit the of camera that calibration is like such a game changer right it and really like i'm pushes everything I'm so like, I didn't use it for years. And then finally one day I was like, I should probably do something with this. And then I was like, oh man, this is cool. Yeah. Yeah. And um, like, so go ahead. I was just going to say it really like pushes it to the extreme. It totally does. Yeah. Yeah. I think it does really nice work. Um, but yeah, so I increased the sharpening a little bit, but I also pulled up the noise and color noise reduction and color noise reduction as well. Cause it's going to soften it a little bit because this is like, it has a bunch of digital painting aspects to it already. So I'm just going to hit OK. And I think the softness in this will actually look kind of good. But yeah, uh, that's pretty amazing. much where I wound yeah. up with this. <laughs> yeah, I love it. It looks so good. Let's see, what if I duplicate you and put you on top? There it is. I just duplicated my soft light layer and just like put it on over top just to give it oh, like yeah. that last little bit of glow. Yeah, yeah, that's it right there. That's perfect. I'm kind of into that. <laughs> yeah, I love like the deepness of it too, of like the background with the darker tones. That's, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, like basically what I want this to look like is like if you're looking out the window on a rainy day, you know, yes. in like some like, you know, neon future, what would you see if you saw this guy and his cat just like hanging out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah like technically uh, this cat is like a little bit dark like the contrast is a little much but also black cats like do absorb color but like if anybody wants to shred me about this online you super can because technically my black point here between the cat and the black point of him don't really match but mm, whatever you do this live yeah. and do it better than me <laughs> yeah exactly and I I think it turned out amazing and you know we got to see all of the little techniques that you put into it so let's just quickly look at this one compared to the one you did um last night always curious to see yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how the style changes I'm gonna open that up right now do, 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 open with. Bam. Wow. Yeah. So that's the difference. So cool. I like change two the head different tip. looks. <laughs> wow. I kind of like this one more though. Yeah. It's if much I had, dreamier. Like, I, love, I love this, but like, yeah, this is like super dreamy. I definitely like leaned into the, to the softness and the splatteriness of it all today. Yeah. And I think like exactly what you said with going for looking like it's looking through a rainy window, you get that mm. vibe much more in this one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whereas this one's like, you see them on the street a little bit and yeah. whatever, but I think, yeah, this one has like a voyeuristic yeah. aspect to it, which I kind of like. And it totally feels like it has more of a story, like depth to it. It's not just like 
like in the other one, he kind of looks like he's just stamped on there and this, yeah. 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 Good job. I'm super, Thanks. super impressed. Very, very cool. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me on with this, guys. I super appreciate it. I'm yes. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Renee. It's been an absolute pleasure hosting you. And I hope everyone learned something new today and had a lot of fun with us creating this cyberpunk vision. And be sure to stick around after for the creative encore of Illustrator Creative Challenge with Julia Vaca, immediately followed by day two of branding with RK from Simmer Studios. Thank you so much for her. Wow. Thank you so much for watching everyone. <laughs> and Renee, again, thank you for being here with us. Have a great rest of your week and take care everyone. Bye guys. Bye.